Okay, uh, let's just uh, uh, remind you uh, what, what we covered uh, in the last lecture. Uh, basically, uh, one thing we did is uh, we studied a, a two plus one dimensional uh, lattice model uh, to describe uh, this Z2 uh, SPT states. And uh, so we emphasize that uh, the, the trick is to have uh, some special realization of the symmetry. And uh, uh, remember, in one plus one dimension, uh, what we have is that uh, we split degree freedom in one side. And then we split that into two parts. Although the two degree freedom together uh, form a representation of a group, but each one do not. So that's a way we play a trick like that. And uh, so, uh, so, so, but however, in one plus one dimension, although each fractionalized degree freedom do not form a representation, but they form a so-called projective representation. And the projective representation happen to be uh, characterized by this uh, H2 of the group with the U1 coefficient. So, so that's, that's basically what's what happened in one plus one dimension. This H2 is group cohomology. I covered a little bit near the end of last lecture. And then in two plus one dimension, uh, what we have is that uh, we split the degree freedom, for example, into four side, a, a four fractionalized degree freedom. Although all together, they form a Z2 representation. But each one, it's not representation. But however, the reason each qubit is not representation is slightly different. It's not like uh, each one is a project representation. So the face, the, 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 the structure we introduce is not on the side, it's on the link. So, so they, they, they kind of on, the, on, the, on, uh, on, on, on this link. Okay, and uh, so, uh, Yes. So, do you like uh, simple, uh, like, 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 functions and complex, or like, like simple spin-hall effect, or like the spin-hall effect? Do you just differentiate it from the other spin-hall effect? Yes. Quantum spin-hall effect is the SPT. Okay. Uh, and uh, so, so why, why do you start with this one and not the spin-hall effect, like the same level complicated one? Quantum spin-hall effect is a fermion. Fermion is a lot more complicated to have a systematic study. Uh, even now, we don't have a systematic uh, theory for fermion. And we have some example for free fermion. But for interacting fermion, we know much less. But the free fermion have a very different uh, mathematical uh, framework. Uh, so actually, since you raised this, you know, for free fermion to understand the topology insulator, or topological superconductor, you're thinking about a topology. For interacting case, you're thinking about the trivial. Because they are shorter entangled. You think about shorter entangled with a little bit of twist then you get this. But if you think about topology for interacting case, you, you, you won't get this. So actually, the, 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 the thinking is totally different. One thinking about non-trivial, and here we think about trivial. And uh, if you think about trivial, you make a progress. Yes? Um, so do we say here in this case, we belong to a non-trivial distribution? Yes, uh, a two, we mean one plus one D? Uh, two plus one. Uh, yes, but with translation symmetry. If you do not have translation symmetry, that is not SPT. So that's protected by translation and SO3 rotation. So, so without translation, you may it's translation. not, that is not, that's trivial. That one is trivial. Yeah. Okay, so, so actually what I'm writing down here is a little bit not correct. And, uh, oh, maybe it's, okay. So, okay, so, so the, the point I try to say is that so the, uh, uh, we adding, so, so we have this non-local, non-onset transformation. But however, the phase, we have this actual phase twist. This actual phase twist, it's kind of go around this, uh, if you think of this foresight as a ring, this uh, phase shift is like a go around the ring. So it's a one-dimensional structure. It's not like uh, 
not like in, in one lower dimension, we have two point. Then this, uh, this actual, the, 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 the extension happen on the point, a zero dimensional thing. But the here, the extension of this uh, actual twist happen on the boundary, on the ring. Why unfit is structured? Because uh, uh, this tells us how to generalize to higher dimension. Uh, so this is a two plus one dimension. So in a three plus one dimension, then we would, uh, we would think uh, we split each side into eight, uh, eight degree freedom. Then we have a cube. Then here we want to introduce something on the surface of a cube. So there's a, there's a phase twist we add on, try to make a semi-transformation -trans non-on-site. It should be on this uh, square or maybe on the triangle. So for every triangle, we add actual face. So a little mistake I made here is uh, that. So the actual face actually, I don't, I don't remember exactly. It's something like uh, this, uh, H G star. Uh, maybe let me put this uh, H uh, one. Okay. So, so, so for every phase, uh, for every transformation generated by this uh, H, H is a symmetry transformation. We add a phase factor. This uh, phase factor is a is is a function. It's given by the function of five uh, variables, and uh, certainly. The last variable is a set equal to one, and this one is a, is a simple transformation you want to make. And this uh, zero, one, two is uh, some kind of a, a, a degree freedom on this uh, three side. And I'm writing this way because uh, 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 this one happened to be the group co-cycle we introduced in the last, uh, end of last uh, lecture. So basically, the group co-cycle we used to define the topological term also appear in this uh, angle twist. And, uh, but in some rather indirect way, uh, I don't remember exactly this one, but something like that, you know. And, uh, and oh, similarly, this uh, phase twist uh, Z, CZ also have similar structure. This uh, CZ is a group co-cycle with uh, G0, G1, but then this transformation and the one, something like that, you know. So with, uh, we, now here we have one less uh, variable. Okay, so so this this is a, this is a generalization to higher dimension. When you go to higher dimension, uh, you split degree freedom on each side into several, you know, into many of them. Then you add a single twist on the co-dimensional one structure or surface. So that's a how they generalize to higher dimension. And also that's why in higher dimension we don't have a projective rotation because projective rotation is something on the point. It's not on the loop on the surface. And this, uh, so that's only H2. And here is H3. So H3 is something on the loop. Then H4 on a three dimensional case, three plus one dimensional case, will be, will be something on the surface. The symmetry twist, the angular twist will be on the surface. It's a surface structure. And uh, so that's, that's how one generalized to, uh, to higher uh, dimension. And uh, so, uh, so in the last uh, uh, lecture, uh, we, uh, we, we emphasized that uh, uh, one way to build or to construct this type of state systematically is to using nonlinear signal model. Yes? No, it's not. Uh, I, I don't understand why it's, uh, uh, to me, I don't have a associative or non associative structure. I don't, I don't think about associativity point of view. Uh, so mathematically, I, 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 I don't know where I need associativity. What I try to say is that when I build this face, this face is okay. It don't cause any problem. Uh, it's, uh, I, I'm thinking about, your, you're probably thinking about the, there's a mathematical structure to build this uh, uh, group or cohomology that's uh, you, you violate the associativity and et cetera. Uh, I, I don't know how how that structure would appear. Um, uh, maybe, but I I don't think from that point of view. I'm thinking from this point of view that uh, this uh, cycle is uh, simply a term in the Lagrangian. 
So that's what I'm trying to explain. So I, I don't think about the co-cycle as a way to break associativity. I'm thinking about the co-cycle simply is a, it's a Lagrange, it's an action amplitude on the, if you triangulate the space time on each uh, uh, cell of a space time, we have action amplitude. This action amplitude depends on degree freedom on this shell, which happened at a vertex. So, so in the space time, we triangulate the space time, we put the degree freedom on the vertex of a cell, and then we say each cell have amplitude given by this uh, new, which is a co-cycle, or, or, or more precisely, a co-chain. And then product, those amplitude give us pass integral. And uh, that, that's it, it's, uh, I'm not thinking about the associativity, I'm just thinking about the pass integral. Then, then, then all I want to need to do is that uh, I want to choose a special uh, uh, pass integral, special Lagrangian, such that on any closed manifold, the amplitude of pass, pass always equal to one, something trivial. And uh, certainly we, we also symmetric, so this we have a symmetry condition and uh, we have a so-called more or less trivial condition. That is, uh, on, on each closed space-time manifold, the product of this uh, uh, little amplitude, which gave us a total phase of the pass, which always equal to one. And this gave us a co-cycle condition. And so we view co-cycle from this point of view, so not from associativity point of view. And uh, uh, so, but I don't know how to link to the, uh, its associativity point of view. And, uh, and uh, so that's where we were uh, in, in the last lecture. But it's very simple. It's, we just try to define a discrete pass integral, which is more or less, tri which kind of trivial, trivial in the sense for every pass in the closed manifold, the amplitude equal to one. But however, the, for the pass on the open space-time manifold, the amplitude is not equal to one because uh, each cell have a non-trivial amplitude. Uh, so that's make it uh, less trivial, okay. And then we, then we last time we mentioned that this equation have many, many solutions. Actually have many, many solutions. So, so, it's, uh, so therefore we cannot say that every solution of this equation gave us a particular individual phase. And uh, actually if a two solution can be continuously deformed in, into each other, because this is a new, just a, a complex function. You can deform it. If two solutions can be continuously deformed into each other, they should be equivalent. They, can, uh, they should occur from the same phase. So we are thinking about the pi zero of the solution space. And uh, the pi zero, actually there's another way to construct the pi zero, is that uh, uh, we, if, uh, if, uh, if new is a solution, new tilt is also a solution. This new tilt is constructed from the new by multiplying some functions. Remember that the new is a function in this two power one plus one dimension. New is function associated with a triangle. And each triangle have a three edges. So now we can have a function associated with each edge. So for two dominant edge, you know, so this uh, one, two, we have a beta one, two. And uh, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually looking at this one. Uh, this is uh, zero, one, one, two, one, let me see which one. Maybe the lower one, yeah, this triangle, that's what I'm looking at. So zero, one, one, two. This is uh, zero, one, one, two. This is two dominant orientation. And the zero, two have opposite orientation. So this function on this edge go downstairs. And uh, if you, you can choose arbitrary function of a beta like this, two variable function, certain with a symmetry. And uh, then you, you modify new two in this fashion. And uh, then you can easily check that uh, this pattern just cancel out in this equation because the two ed the, the, this, this every edge are shared by two triangle and uh, then this, uh, this, uh, they, they just cancel. So this is new tilt two also a solution. Because this function arbitrary, so this two new tilt and new two should be uh, uh, connected. And uh, uh, so therefore that's a mathematical way to, def to, to, to calculate the pi zero. We just caution out this relation. We say these two are is equivalent. Multiply this factor is the equivalence solution, equivalence relation. And uh, if you uh, caution out this equivalence solution, what's left is uh, this uh, H two. So that's basically the definition of a, a 
group cohomology. So in some sense, it's rather simple. It's just a function, like H2 is a function of three variables with a symmetry and with this additional condition, and then we caution out uh, this kind of equivalence relation or what ha whatever we left is this a group homology. And this actually define the topological uh, two pi quantized topological term for discrete space time. At the same time, uh, this factor can also be used uh, in this symmetry twist, try to build this uh, non onside symmetry, which is not removable. Yeah. Okay. So, so this is a, uh, uh, this is a, just a construction. And uh, so uh, I think I, I, I have a much more slide uh, than, can, than I can explain here, so I will skip many. And uh, uh, so, there's a, uh, uh, so there's a one thing is that uh, you say, okay, you have, a, you have a single model, you have something. The ground state of this nonlinear single model is a something. But how do you know it is what you want? So here I claim the ground states describe uh, SPD states. You may say, no, it don't. It describes something else. For example, it may describe a topological ordered state. How do you know the ground state of this model is not topological ordered? It have a, how do you know it have a, a trivial entanglement, only short -term entanglement? Okay, so, so this thing I will skip. And, uh, Okay, so one way to understand this uh, is, uh, uh, okay, the simplest way to understand this uh, is to write down the wave function of this nonlinear model. This, this nonlinear model, this topological nonlinear model is not soluble. You actually can compute ground state wave function explicitly. And it's a look at the ground state wave function and show that it is equivalent to the product state and the local unit. You can show that directly. But here I'm not going to do that. I'm going to using a fancier uh, point of view. So, so we ask uh, what kind of uh, topological environments this one may have. So in spirit, what uh, I had to talk about yesterday. So we try to compute the partition function on any space-time manifold. Okay. So the idea is that uh, if partition function on any speed manifold, it always trivial, like equal to one. Then we say, oh, this one must be trivial. It's a no topological order. So here we try to assume that, uh, which is not totally rigorous, but anyway, we will say that. If a partition function on any space manifold is a trivial, no topological order. If a non-trivial, it have a topological order. <laughs> so, we, so we just do that. So how to compute the partition function on any space time manifold? And for this topological nonlinear signal model, extremely easy. Because we say that uh, if this space-time manifold is uh, closed, then for every pass in the pass integral, the amplitude equal to one. So we just need to count how many pass do we have, because each pass equal to one. And uh, so basically, we try, try to say that this is the pass integral. So this product is the total amplitude of the pass. And we already say that. Uh, this, this quantity is always equal to one. And then we just sum over all the uh, paths, that's a degree freedom on the vertex. So the end up we get something like uh, the, the number of elements in the group raised by the power of a number of a vertex. So that is a, that is a partition function for on any closed space-time manifold. It's very, very simple. Then you'll say, well, this is non-trivial. You can say they have depend on something. But this dependence, we say, is trivial. It's uh, just a volume. You know, it's a volume dependence. And uh, it's corresponding to shifting the ground state energy. And uh, so we can redefine the ground state energy and uh, uh, to cancel this uh, volume term. Then if one, once you do that, uh, this, uh, uh, this is equal to one. So the partition function equal to one on any space-time manifold. So, so, uh, so then this is the argument to say, yeah, this passing integral define a trivial states, non-topological states. So that is the argument. Yes. Yes. And uh, so if you choose, that's a very good point. If you choose a space time to be MD space manifold times S1, then this partition function after quotient out the volume term exactly equal to ground state DNC. So this implies that uh, 
ground to DNA say on any spatial, closed spatial manifold equal to one. But more than that, <laughs> this is more than that. Even when space time is not m times s one, this also equal to one, so it's, uh, it's, it's a little stronger. But however, in this argument, though, there's a loophole here. We only uh, demand that the partition function, this, this path equal to one on the sphere. You know, we only check the simplest sphere. The cosine recognition is for the sphere, not for any two-dimensional manifold. But however, uh, because of a construction, you can show that uh, this argument apply for any space-time manifold which can be glue constructed by gluing spheres. <laughs> yeah. And so this is a qualifier I want to claim, that's uh, on the point now. It's, it's a, uh, uh, for anything which can be constructed by gluing sphere like this, I, I, I can glue three spheres together and uh, there's a touching point, the amplitude on this touching point from this sphere and from this sphere actually cancel out. And uh, so eventually we can remove this touching point, then you can get this. Then you can see that this is three sphere glued together give us a torus. So it, that's how it could go from sphere to torus. So at least, uh, so this argument works for torus. For anything which can be obtained from gluing sphere, this would work. But I don't know whether by gluing sphere do we get all the topology of a higher dimensional manifold. I don't know, uh, maybe I should ask some mathematicians. But at least uh, from our argument, uh, this works for any space that man manifold obtainable by gluing spheres. So when you say gluing spheres in your construction seems to really mean simplices. Yeah, simplices, yeah. Simplices. Yeah. So when you, when, when you glue, the s when the two shell glue together, you can remove them because each cell is glued with opposite orientation, they have a... It's really a question of whether you can triangulate the manifold in terms of simplices. I see. Yeah, that's maybe a nice way to look at it. So. So, yeah, so, so you say that if any manifold can be triangulated in terms of simplices, they probably can be constructed by, yeah, I think, yeah, that's probably true. Can be constructed from gluing spheres. Huh? Maybe they can't in terms of. Yeah, so actually, this is a question mark here. <laughs> and uh, uh, it would be really interesting if uh, there's some exception and this actually group cohomology actually construct something. Non-trivial, but that would mean they have a topological order then. So, uh, so, so there's a uh, there's some interesting, interesting thing here, and uh, so I I don't want to claim everything's crystal clear now. But it's a uh, it's a still very interesting shuttle thing, and this new shuttle may may open up into something very interesting. But yeah. Okay. But this is an argument at the moment they say, okay, group, group cohomology give us trivial topology order, certainly with some question mark. <laughs> okay, and then using this, uh, we can just uh, build, uh, uh, build, uh, build a table. And uh, because of the, uh, uh, you can, if you don't know how to compute the HD, you just ask mass overflow. Actually, this table is obtained from all my questions on mass overflow. And, <laughs> and so, uh, uh, I think there's a lot of mathematicians which are very nice, which patiently answer my questions. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, and uh, so, so they can get 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 some uh, table. And uh, but uh, instead of go go through the table, so now I want to ask another question. So, so the moment ago I tried to argue, all these uh, topological nonlinear thing model uh, uh, gave rise to a state with no topological order. Okay, so at least short entangled, we try to argue with that. And uh, so now I will ask another question. How do you know this tabular nonlinear thing model give anything non-trivial? They may always give us product states. Why not? You know, we already say that all the paths equal to one is pretty trivial thing, you know. And uh, why not it give product states? So, so now I ask uh, another question, another type of question to say, why this uh, topological nonlinear thing model give us anything non-trivial. How do you know it's non-trivial? How do you know it is not product states? It's maybe just a product states. So that is the question. And uh, this is a much uh, harder question. And uh, this, uh, so, so this question arises because uh, what we discussed so far is a construction. We just construct a model. We did not discuss any physical consequence. 
So the model we construct may be nice, but uh, the nice may be mean trivial. You know, sometimes when you construct trivial model, they are really, really nice. And uh, so, uh, so they may be trivial. So to discuss non-trivial uh, thing, we need to identify so-called topological environments or some experimental measurements which can distinguish trivial phase from non-trivial phase. And then you, you, you perform this kind of experimental measurement on the model you constructed and to see whether it's trivial or not trivial. And, uh, and here we also wish to have so-called universal probe. That is, uh, you design one type of experiments and the result from this one type of experiments can distinguish all possible uh, phase. Uh, one nice example for universal probe is X-ray scattering for crystal order. <laughs> you just do this one experiment, then you can distinguish all crystal order. And uh, so then we call this uh, X-ray diffraction. It's a universal probe for crystal order. So now we ask, uh, what is universal probe for SPT order? And uh, the trouble is that uh, if you do the correlation function, uh, uh, they are trivial. The, all the correlation functions are short range. No symmetry breaking. Seems nothing you can have uh, to tell them, to say they are non-trivial. Then you may say, okay, maybe edge state is, uh, is, uh, is good. So I, actually, actually, edge state is very, very good. But edge state is not convenient because uh, when, you, when you make an edge, you, ha you are free to put any edge Hamiltonian. The edge state can be, there are many, many edge states. So, so it's, uh, it's difficult. So, so actually, this, uh, uh, I think the uh, Levin Gu and uh, 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 kind of proposed this, uh, this gauging the symmetry. Gauging the global symmetry is a way to obtain universal uh, probe. So that is, uh, so the idea is that uh, I will just argue that uh, if, the, if you put SPD states on any space-time manifold, closed manifold, the partition function always equal to one up to volume term, okay? So it does not work. But however, because we have a symmetry, now we have an option to gauge the symmetry. And if you gauge the symmetry, then uh, we have a, a twisted uh, model. Then the partition function for the twisted model is not equal to one. And then, then we can use in the partition function uh, as universal probe uh, to measure uh, this SPT order. And uh, certainly, the gauging uh, symmetry gave us a gauge field, and uh, so now the, in the space time, now we have a gauge field. So now we have this uh, Panin function with non zero gauge field, then we get not equal to one. So this is basically uh, the idea. So, how do we gauge the symmetry? So, uh, I think for, for hundreds of students, it's just a really standard thing. And uh, for, for some kinetic metaphysics, let me try to explain this. Uh, we know that uh, uh, the in the field theory, so let's use field theory to explain this uh, in, in this slide. Uh, we have the nonlinear thing model, and uh, then we have this, uh, uh, we have the global uh, symmetry. And uh, so if you apply uh, G, uh, change G to GX, if H is constant, we have a global uh, transformation. That, that's a symmetry. Okay, but here, uh, here, let me try to describe the gauge uh, in a little bit more detail. Is that uh, so? So what we do is that we change we change the variable. We change in gx to hx times gx. Hx and fixed gx is still a variable. Then you just uh, plug into this uh, expression, and then you find this uh, 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 the derivative term. The derivative term uh, have a shift. It's h inverse dh. The constant term do not have a shift because the constant term is usually uh, have a, is a, you, you know, the constant term is a potential term which is already invariant under this constant transformation. But, uh, but because, uh, because the V term have no derivative, it doesn't care whether V is a constant or not constant. And so, so this, uh, if you don't have derivative, then there's no H dependence. But when you have a derivatives, when you have a derivatives, then there are some H dependence. But the H dependence only in terms of H inverse DH, so we call it A. Then, uh, yeah, here the field theory, everything's continuous. 
Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll consider lattice version a little bit later. Yeah. And then the, the, then the standard thing is that uh, now we can replace uh, A by, uh, by vector, any vector field rather than this, uh, this, the vector field of this form. Then you eventually kind of gauge the symmetry. So you, you construct a, uh, 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 a Lagrangian which contains this uh, gauge potential. And then this uh, partition function with this uh, arbitrary gauge potential will be the gauged uh, uh, partition function. Yes? Sorry, oh, it was confusing. Is the bundle non-trivial? Okay, and uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think, uh, uh, oh, okay, yeah, I, I, I think I mentioned it here, yeah. So, so, why explain that in words? I think using the kind of physics the way, just uh, just replacing this, uh, replacing this uh, uh, h inverse dh by some arbitrary vector potential, and even including the possibility the vector potential can be only patchwise defined, so including the possibility of a non-trivial <laughs> bundle. And uh, uh, you know, in this paragraph, I just described this in the more mathematical form. In a sense, uh, this path integral can be viewed as uh, the sum over cross section of a trivial bundle, which is uh, MD, the space time cross G. That's a function. And uh, then the gauge in mathematical term is like uh, I choosing a non trivial flat bundle. But non trivial bundles have no section. Uh, no, this section would be this, uh, let me see, how do I say this? Uh, uh, it's a, it's a, I think this locally. So G is not actually continuous? It's a, I think locally, so because it's only, oh, for non-trivial bundle, as my understanding is patchwise defined. Right. So then for a different patch, you have to glue them, you transform. So the G is not continuous function, okay. yeah. But only patchwise defined function, only kind of local continuous. I, I don't know what to say this. But Aren't we on a lattice in this explanation? Oh uh, no, this is not on a lattice. Uh, okay, but well, you're motivating it. But in a moment, we'll be back on a lattice, right? Oh. Yeah, the moment, but certainly with the for the yeah for the for the flat bundle, I think it's okay. For non-flat bundle, there's even more, there's more shuttle tests. Yes, yeah, m maybe this is uh, not so accurate. But actually, the 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 gauging is really flat bundle is uh, is much better. So. Uh, so, so here is uh, some description of uh, like uh, what we talk about, what I mean by this uh, U1 uh, symmetry twist or gauging U1 symmetry. So it's actually say on the, on the, on the, uh, on the torus, uh, for example, and you have these uh, two non-contractible non loops. And then we can have a, a vector potential uh, which is a, uh, uh, flat in the sense of its curvature equal to zero, the field strength equal to zero. But uh, however, integration over this non contractor loop is uh, non zero. So this vector potential describes uh, some U1 symmetry twist or this, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, flat uh, U1 connection. Okay, and uh, for the Z2 symmetry twist, it's uh, similar. It's, but uh, for the Z2, is that when you go around this uh, 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 circle, uh, you always uh, you you just making the you, you you may make a Z2 symmetry twist, okay. So therefore, for the Z2 symmetry twist, we just uh, restrict this uh, circular integral loop integral to zero and a pi. So that's a Z2 symmetry twist, okay. So this is this is just two example we can using a, a, a one form vector potential to describe a symmetry twist. But however, here I want to mention that uh, uh, there's a Poincaré duality in, in this case. So one form uh, uh, vector potential can be due to a co-dimensional one sub manifold, at least for the Z2 case. And uh, so, uh, so basically, this is just another way to say that uh, we can look at this uh, uh, Z2 simple twist as a uh, some co-dimensional and some manifold, such that we perform a Z2 transformation across the boundary. So we're adding the 
some strange boundary condition across this boundary. So we glue two sides after a Z2 twist. And this is the same thing as uh, this uh, uh, vector potential uh, language. So therefore, what I really try to say is that uh, the Z2 symmetry twist have a two uh, way to describe it. Either using a vector potential whose loop integral is quantized, or using, the, or using two dimensional one sub manifold. <laughs> and uh, like this, this sub manifold describe non trivial Z2 twist, but this sub manifold is contrapable, so only describe a trivial Z2 twist. Okay. And uh, so this is a, a way to describe a twist. So what you claim is that uh, if you add this kind of symmetry twist, uh, if you add this uh, uh, gauge potential, to the topological nonlinear sigma model, then their partition function will be modified. Then by study how partition function depend on various uh, symmetry twist or gauge potential on the space-time manifold, and that gave us the so-called SPD topology environments. And uh, so then we can just uh, using this as universal probe uh, to, to, uh, to characterize all the, this SPD phase. So that's kind of uh, uh, the idea. And, uh, so, uh, uh, so this is a, uh, so that's another formal way to say that uh, we consider uh, pass integral and uh, the pass integral with a twist. And uh, then if the twist is a flat, if a twist is totally flat, you know, it's a flat connection. And then one can argue that uh, uh, this ratio is always a pure phase factor. And this pure phase factor uh, is uh, is uh, this uh, uh, SPT uh, environments? Yes. It's a probe field. It's not dynamic at all. A very very good question. So the A here are probe field. So I do not want to call this a gauge theory. This is like a response theory. You know, the A is a probe field. It's a fixed. So this is a response theory. Okay. And uh, I have some confusion about uh, for continuous group. You do have option to make uh, A uh, non-flat. And uh, when A is non-flat, then this ratio is not guaranteed to be pure phase. And uh, how to handle that situation, I'm confused about. I don't know uh, what to do. But uh, I wish by considering flat connection alone may give us all information for continuous group, uh, but I'm not sure. And, uh, but, uh, but if I, ha if I have to use non-flat connection for continuous group, then I have to handle this quantity is not purely phase. There's additional compli complication. So, so there's some puzzle I have here. And, uh, but for discrete group, I think uh, the flat connection is enough. Uh, for continuous group, there's extra shuttle thing. Yeah, but uh, uh, yes. Well, presumably for continuous group, what you want to say is that integrating out the gapped theory produces a churn simons interaction. That's right. And although it's possible, it's a little bit unnatural to try to capture that just by looking at flat connections. That's right, yeah. So this is, a, this is really the question about, uh, uh, yeah, whether it's possible to capture the churn simons theory <laughs> using flat connection, but on, on some weird space-time topology, if that's possible. If you do, Certainly, to, to, we know how to characterize chain Simon theory using non-flat connection. We have a non-flat connection, we can certainly see the chain Simon term. But however, when we have a non-flat connection, we also have this uh, F squared term. <laughs> and this, is a, this term can spoil uh, this uh, purely phase factor condition. And uh, so, so for continuous group, there's a problem. Now here, I just provide one solution to this problem, we say, Two topology environments differ by this uh, thing depend on metric would be equivalent, but this just hand waving way try to hide the problem. But uh, but anyway, so I just another point. So there may be an issue here. Be interesting. Question? Yes. No, it's uh, it's too complicated. I don't have a time. Yeah, Sorry. and. Uh, Yeah, and uh, so if you can use in, if you can, if you can, if you can uh, make a state into product states, 
using symmetric local unity transformation, then basically the, the fixed point theory will be the purely product states. And, the, and the, in this purely product state, the symmetry act onside locally. And that looks really, really trivial. So maybe you have none of this. And uh, so basically that's correspond to the situation where uh, uh, let me see, do I say anything here? Maybe next transparency. Yeah, that's corresponding situation where we don't have a topological theta term. You know, you can see in, in the non thing model, because we have a topological theta term, and then we gauge it, that gives us uh, some topological term which depends on A, which coming directly from topological theta term. So, so that's why we, we get a non-trivial topological environments. That's a, that's a continuous version. And, uh, but for the trivial case, we don't even have a topological theta term. The fixed point action really s equal to zero. Then you gauge s equal to zero, still s equal to zero. So we don't have anything. At least formally, we don't get anything uh, if we have this trivial case. Okay. And uh, then someone raised this uh, issue about the probe field. Indeed, the big A here is a probe field. It's don't flash, it's just, just completely constant. It's some parameter in the Hamiltonian. But uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, this, uh, this term we obtain as a function of A have a local gauge invariance. You can, you can change in A by some local gauge transformation, and this action is invariant. So if you view A as a flat within gauge field, then this, uh, this term actually defines a gauge theory. <laughs> and this gauge theory is nothing but uh, this uh, diagraph written gauge theory. So that's the connection between the SPD state and this uh, uh, diagraph written theory. So when you, when you gauge the global symmetry, you get the probe field, you get the SPD environment. But the SPD environment actually is an action for gauge field. <laughs> and if you think this gauge field as dynamical, then this action for SPD environment gauge field happen to describe this uh, uh, diagraph written uh, theory. And this connection actually is more precise on the lattice for discrete group. For discrete group, we have a very rigorous way to define all this. And uh, so, so, so then, so let me describe a little, little bit. Remember, in, as, as you two plus one, two plus two, sorry, one plus one, as an example. Remember in one plus one dimension, uh, our action is uh, uh, defined by product of a lot of action amplitude on each cell, on each triangle. So on each triangle, we have this uh, function of three variables, you know, this uh, G, I, J, K, this new three G, I, J, K. Actually, I should say new two, I'm sorry, this uh, should be new two, that's a mistake. And uh, so new two G, I, J, K is two co-cycle, so this is just defined for each triangle. And this action amplitude for each triangle. And uh, this nonlinear thing model is okay. So our degree of freedom live on the vertex. So that's give us nonlinear thing model. The diagraph written theory is a gauge theory. So gauge theory, we know that the, the degree of freedom is a gauge connection, which live on the uh, on the on the edge. So so therefore, in diagraph written gauge theory, it's also defined by the product of a lot of action amplitude on each triangle. But now the degree of freedom is a gate degree of freedom, which live on the edge. And so therefore, we should have a function, uh, 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 function on these edge variables. So this omega three is a function of those edge variables. So therefore, the darker witness theory is defined by product of a lot of omega three, or omega two, more precisely. <laughs> so, uh, so that's defined action amplitude. And then there's an exact mapping uh, for uh, for the nonlinear sigma model, topological nonlinear sigma model, we can obtain a diagraph written uh, action. Uh, from diagraph written action, we can obtain the, the nonlinear sigma model action. And this, uh, this relation in mathematics is well known. It's, it's, uh, one is called a cocycle in homogeneous form, another is cocycle in non homogeneous form. And uh, the reason we have these two expressions of cocycle is precisely because. Uh, the co-cycle condition, uh, oh, I think I go too much back, yeah. The co-cycle, our co-cycle have this symmetry condition. You know, for new two, we should have a three variable, but with the symmetry condition, we know that only two variables are active. 
we can use some symmetry condition to remove one variable. So, so, so effectively, this is really a function of a two variable. And uh, so that's uh, one thing. And uh, the digraph written uh, term action also only depend on two variables. You may ask, uh, well, you have a three uh, edge. So this new three should depend on all the three uh, gauge connection on the edge. It should be also have uh, three variables. But however, uh, in the diagram Witten theory, uh, there is a constraint that uh, only flat gauge configuration have a non-zero amplitude. <laughs> All the non-flat gauge configuration have a zero amplitude. <laughs> so we have a condition that uh, this, uh, I don't know what they are there, right? Yeah, we have a condition that uh, this uh, ik, gik, is equal to gij times gjk. There's a constraint. And that's a flat connection. So the, the omega-3 only non-zero for this uh, flat connection. And so only all two variables. So in both cases, this due to symmetry condition only depend two variable, this due to flat connection only depend two variable, then there's a way to, to make them match. So this is an expression to make them match. And that is a mapping. <laughs> and uh, so, so from new three, you can get omega three, which define diagram with a model, or from omega three, you can get new three, to which describe non second model. So there's a one to one mapping as a, as a th different theory. You know, non non three model is one theory. Diagraph with model is another theory. So the, as a theory, they are different. They have different physical properties. But these two theories have a one-to-one -one mapping between them. So, so this is a, uh, but this one-to-one -one mapping between them happen to be the gauging for the discrete on the lattice with the discrete group. This happened to be the, the gauging process in a more precise uh, form. Okay. And uh, so, so, so this, uh, those are the just discussion of those, uh, this uh, gauging uh, process. And uh, so the bottom line is that uh, for every SPD state, we should have some kind of a, a gauge action, which is uh, SPD topology variance, which characterize SPD uh, states. And uh, so let me just using the, uh, let's get one simplest example, SU3. And uh, for SU3, you know, uh, uh, because of, uh, in, three, in 2 plus 1D, the pi 3 of, uh, sorry, SU2, the pi 3 of SU2 is Z, so there's a non-trivial winding number. So then we can, in the, even in the field theory, we can define this uh, topological, 2 pi quantized topological term. So this uh, topological term is just uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, G inverse DG cube with trace, then you integral that to get the winding number. Okay, so in our gauging process is that we just replace this uh, uh, G inverse DG by A. <laughs> so then we have just uh, A cube, that's it. And this is okay if A is flat. If A is a totally flat connection, and this is our uh, uh, topological term. But however, uh, if A is not flat, then this A cube is not quite gauge invariant. And uh, so, so we know how to make them gauge invariant. And uh, sorry, it's, uh, it's just adding this. Uh, adding this uh, 3AF term, <laughs> then this is became a uh, uh, transaminant theory of SU2, and uh, this, uh, this whole thing should be gauging run up to surface term anyway. So this kind of uh, uh, the gauging process, we try to derive from this nonlinear sigma model topological term to the SPT environments, which is the gauge theory, uh, gauge theory action for probe gauge field. And uh, so this is actually uh, give us table, and we can only do this in two plus dimension, the, the, the other dimension we don't have anything. So therefore, uh, uh, so therefore we have SPD state in two plus dimension whose uh, SPD invariance is this. And uh, actually from this SPD invariance, this SPD invariance is a very mathematical way to encode all the physical consequences of this SPD states. And uh, so therefore from SPD invariance, if we're smart enough, we can try to extract a physical measurement which can detect or probe this SPT uh, environment. For this particular case, uh, we can restrict, for example, we can restrict this uh, two by two matrix as a one in the tau three only, uh, 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 U1, only the U1 uh, part. So the, then we can have a SZ uh, 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 con uh, conservation and this SZ hall connectance. So there's a, a so-called, uh, uh, this uh, transformer term uh, uh, have these uh, spin hall connectors, for example, for the SZ quantum number. And uh, 
And also, uh, also this, uh, this, uh, this uh, bulk topology variance would imply that if you have a boundary, uh, then there must be gapless uh, excitation on the boundary. And this actually have a, it's related to, uh, 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 this can be really explained uh, in the following way. And uh, so, so in the bulk, we know that this uh, SU2 uh, SPD state is described by this uh, topological nonlinear thing model with only so the fixed point action just have this pure topological term, no other term. So this is a topological term uh, for, for this pure uh, uh, non topological nonlinear thing model. Okay. And then what on the boundary? Then on the boundary, it's very simple. We just, uh, we say, okay, now, now M3 have a boundary. <laughs> it's just that. The M3 have a boundary. So, uh, sorry, we just, we just M3 have a boundary. Okay. But however, on the, when you have a boundary, so then, then on the boundary of M3, and, uh, Somehow, this is dynamical, that's my understanding, this dynamical term re-emerges. Uh, what I try to, try to say is that uh, if, you, if you don't add a dynamical term, what you have is that uh, uh, you, you, the, the, bun, the, the boundary uh, effective action is just this, uh, just this term. And this term has this uh, different meaning than this term. It's that uh, we fix, uh, it, once we fix the spin on the boundary, uh, which is the boundary of uh, M3, then you can extend this spin to one higher dimension and uh, compute this topological term. And this topological term will be regarded as a uh, edge action. And uh, certainly this is uh, possible because this topological term do not depend on how you extend the boundary configuration to the bulk because this is a coefficient quantized. For no matter how you extend it, you always get the same thing. So therefore, this term actually is only depend on the spin on the boundary. Do not depend on spin on the bulk. So this term actually also looks like a three-dimensional integral. It's actually describe dynamics of a spin on the boundary. But this is the pure weiss middle witten term uh, for the boundary. And this pure weiss middle witten term for the boundary theory actually is not fixed point theory. So somehow this dynamic term emerge, and then this combination is more like a, a fixed point theory on the boundary. But a reason is that uh, uh, if you if you are including this uh, dynamical term, then you'll find that the equation motion uh, for this G, just a classic equation motion. My understanding is that the decoupled, uh, there is a uh, there is a holomorphic piece and a non holomorphic anti holomorphic piece describing right mover and the left mover. So that's a this uh, conformal theory that the decoupling of a left mover, right mover would, uh, would be captured by this uh, theory. And uh, then, then we can see that the right mover have this form. And uh, then under our same transformation, this uh, only multiplied from the left, you can see this form actually transform at, at the joint representation of this H. So this H, H inverse, it transform that way. So therefore, the right mover transform non-trivially and the simple transformation. So carry this SU2 charge. But the left mover have this kind of form. <laughs> then if you do this H transformation, the H is uh, here and here. They kind of cancel each other between these two G. And this current don't change, it's a singlet. So therefore, this, uh, the right mover carry SU2 charge, left mover do not. So, so therefore, there's a way to see this. As you do, symmetry is realized carrolly. Only right mover carry, left, right mover carry, left mover do not carry. So that's kind of anomalous. So this particular as you do is anomalous. But certainly you can see the left mover carry another as you do, which is multiplying h to the, from the right, oh, I, I don't know why I say left. Anyway, from another direction. So that's another as you do, okay. So, so this is also review. This one, that's a, that's a Witten's work in the '83, many years ago. So that's review that uh, uh, this uh, this uh, 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 the edge state have this uh, SU2 have this Carroll anomaly, this anomalous SU2, and this anomalous SU2 kind of guarantee that the edge state must be uh, gapless. Yeah. Okay, and. Uh, uh, 
Okay, so, so then that's a S2 story. Then, for the, then, then we can go to U1. What happened for the U1? For the U1, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, uh, in one plus one, in zero plus one dimension, it's a pretty simple. In zero plus one dimension, the tabular term actually is just a G inverse a partial T G. Could we have the lights? Uh, this is okay, yeah, just, uh, I think you can see this. Just, just this, this is the tabular term. G is uh, e to the i theta. That's a U1 group element. And then you, you replace the G inverse partial G, T G by A. <laughs> Then, then that's it. They get a gauge top block term. S P T one is just a just a just a just a A, and this can be viewed as a, a one-dimensional transformation term, just a single A. Okay, and uh, so 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 this uh, yes. It's phys oh sorry, you say so. Yeah. So it's a uh, again we have a similar thing. That's a uh, from this S P T one, which is gauge action. We can involve in physical environment. What kind of physical environment? Then actually, here you have a pass integral. This really describes a pass integral which depends on the uh, constant vector potential in time direction. And this actually, this constant vector potential in time direction only see the charge. So actually, it really means that uh, the ground state carry charge k, the k is this coefficient. So therefore, the, the U1 SPD states in zero plus one dimension basically say how many charge in the ground state. <laughs> If ground state have a zero charge, we say, okay, it's trivial. If ground state carry charge two, we say, okay, it's a second uh, U1 SPD state in zero plus one dimension. So that's a kind of a, a simple case. And uh, then in two plus one dimension, we could have a, a transform term in three dimension transform term. So we could have a SPT invariance uh, in two plus one dimension. But we fail to see this in non, non linear thinking model, at least in the continuous non linear thinking model. Because uh, this kind of construction, because G is only e to the i theta, it only works in zero plus one dimension. In two plus one dimension, when you cube this, this is equal to zero. So there's no continuous field theory non linear thinking model give rise to anything. But however, as a potential SPD invariance, you say, can I write down SPD invariance? Yes, you can write down SPT environments similarly in, in, in any out dimension. So actually, uh, so this is a, a thing. So here, the field theory non-linear thinking model fail to produce uh, uh, this non-trivial U1 SPT state in two plus one dimension. But however, if you do this, uh, uh, if you do this uh, 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 discrete lattice construction, uh, I think a little bit here. Yeah, if you do this discrete lattice construction using this kind of co-cycle, you can do it. But however, with uh, one extra thing, that uh, this function cannot be continuous function of those variables. If you define the co-cycle to be continuous function of a group element, you cannot get it. So for continuous group to have uh, those non-trivial results, uh, this co-cycle can be non-continuous. The reason we allow that is the following. This co-cycle are fixed point action of our physical system. Certainly in our initial definition of physical system, this uh, action always continuous function of a group element. But however, as a co-cycle, there are limit of continuous function in the RG sense, RG limit. But the limit may not be continuous. So limit of a continuous function may not be continuous. And in the co-cycle, in mathematics, we really exactly study this limit. So therefore, we have to remove this continuous condition. This became rather complicated. So using this uh, group cohomology to compute uh, group cohomology uh, for continuous group is uh, rather complicated. But the mathematician uh, 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 find that this uh, group cohomology of continuous group is equal to some kind of topological uh, cohomology on the classifying space. And there you can have some finite calculation. So this is all mathematical thing. But physically, I just want to say that uh, to produce non-trivial U1 results, you need a non-continuous uh, group go cycle. And this is pretty uh, important. But if you do that, you basically, uh, uh, you, you basically have this, uh, uh, have this, uh, uh, have this uh, uh, two plus one U1 theory. 
And again, because they have a transignment term, so we have a hall connectance. Okay. And, uh, uh, and here, I just want to say uh, uh, another thing. So there's one way to probe transignment term. Uh, but however, let's uh, describe this way of probing transignment term using the uh, dimension reduction. Okay. So there's a connection between this topological term and this topological term via dimension reduction. So how do we see that? It's, uh, we can choose a space time to be S1 times M2. M2 is some closed manifold, like a sphere. Okay. And then we can put uh, two pi m flux of u1 into this m2. So therefore, the integration for f on this m2 gave us uh, some kind of m. So therefore, uh, this uh, two-dimensional uh, uh, topological invariance, uh, sorry, three, three two plus one-dimensional topological invariance, can be reduced to one plus one dimension, zero plus one dimensional topological invariance if you integrate over this m2. Okay. Then that's just give a 2km times a. Okay. So that really means that uh, uh, if, we, if we view this uh, space time as S1 times M2, make M1 very, very small, then, then as a zero plus one dimensional theory is described by this kind of uh, SPD state. And that means the ground state have a charge 2km, you know, as uh, just, uh, we say. This coefficient is a ground state, charge of ground state. So that really means that uh, uh, if you put a two pi m flux through this m2, I induce, I induce a, a two k m charge. So that's, a, that's another way to describe a hot conductance. Threading flux <laughs> induce charge. So this is the same thing. So this is a way, uh, another way to probe it. But notice that uh, even when we thread one flux, we get a 2K flux, a 2K charge. So therefore, this uh, coefficient always even integer quantized, which is uh, pointed out by Lu and uh, uh, Vishnu watch. And uh, so this, uh, 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 so let me just uh, go into this a uh, little bit. Yeah. The volume term always dropped. No, the, the volume is cancelled, and uh, in this case, it's cancelled because I carefully define this term. Uh, so this uh, this this topological term, the uh, SPD invariance, is carefully defined the ratio of uh, uh, of these two partition function, one with a twist, another without twist. So this volume term precisely cancelled. So this is actually, this is a practical way, a numerical way to, to compute SPT invariance. Suppose you can compute this pass integral. You just, you just compute this ratio. You directly get this uh, SPT invariance. And this, this is important. Because we want to isolate, uh, there's a lot of non-universal terms. We want to can, cancel out all those non-universal terms. So hopefully only universal terms survive. And this is the one trick. But this trick only works for flat connection. For non-flat, I have some trouble. Okay, so this summarizes that uh, threading, threading a two pi flux would induce a two k charge, and this probe this U one SPD states. Yes, there's some question. Yeah. Boson, uh. Oh yes, and for this particular uh, USPD states, and uh, it's uh, the quantum function is very simple. It's uh, the wave function. It's a double layer wave function with a kind of like a quantum power wave function Z i W i, and uh, which is uh, simply. Uh, Z i minus W i, that's it. <laughs> with some, maybe with some Gaussian term probably. So so presumably this wave function or, or its variant would describe this uh, U1 SPD states. Yeah. So the wave function stable with respect to 
yeah, this is unstable. So you need to add add a non-universal like a square absolute term to make it stable. So this is uh, open. So we don't know whether it can be stabilized or not. But this is like a representative. We hope can stabilize this. Then maybe it's okay. Yeah. So this is the work by uh, uh, Levin and uh, Stansil. Yeah. But here I want to make one point. We know that threading 2 pi flux would induce 2k charge. This is a probe. We can turn this probe around to make it into a mechanism. Then we attaching 2k charge to the U1 vortex would make this U1 SPT states. <laughs> and this is a general feature. You know, almost for every way to probe it, we can turn it around to make it a mechanism. And uh, so the idea is, uh, is this. And uh, if you start with a U1, a 2 plus dimension bosonic superfluid, we know that if you perforate this uh, uh, vortexes, we, we will disorder the U1, we get a multi-insulator. And that is a trivial SPT state. Multi-insulator is trivial SPT states. But however, we can, we can do something different. We can uh, 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 proliferate the vortex, which is attached by 2K charge. We can add a 2K charge to the vortex. Perforate this kind of vortex charge bound states. If you do that, then that's it, you get SPT states labeled by K. So that is, a, uh, that is a one way uh, to do that. So I won't try to explain that, but uh, this is a this is kind of a, a general mechanism. And uh, so, so you may ask why you want to bind uh, 2K even charge? What if you bind, say, one charge? Then you may get fractionalized SPT states. <laughs> You know, uh, the, why, 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 why always attach even charge, you know? And uh, so, uh, so if you, if you attach your charge one, then you may get the SPD states, the Hawk and Acton will be equal to all the integer times this uh, E square over H. But the reason we cannot do that is that uh, uh, if you attach a single charge to the two pi flux, this bound state actually is uh, more like a fermion. So we cannot condense fermion because peripherally the vortex is like condensing the vortex. But when it's become fermion, we cannot condense the fermion. So it's, this doesn't work. And this, but suddenly you can also is condense their bound states. Uh, if, uh, uh, if this uh, charge one vortex is a fermion, then a pair of this kind of uh, uh, a vortex or double vortex actually is possible. And we can always condense this uh, double vortex but when you condense the double vortex, actually what we end up with is a Z2 gauge theory. So again, something with topological order. So it's not, uh, so it also doesn't work. So, uh, so, therefore, uh, uh, so therefore we have this, uh, uh, we can only attach uh, even flux to construct SPD states. But you can indeed attach all the, fl all, all the charge. When you attach all the charge, you make pair condensation, then you get a, that's why you to produce a Z2 gauge theory, maybe with some twist. Actually, there's a, uh, this, this phenomenon is kind of interesting because we kind of claim that uh, for bosonic SPD states, their electromagnetic response are kind of restricted. It can only be have a two even integer uh, uh, Hall coefficient. Or in another way, that's uh, when you integrate out the matter field, we at the most get a transformation theory with the even integer coefficient. So this is like a somehow general property of any bosonic system without topological order. However, for fermion system without topological order, uh, we know that uh, this is this is things different. The coefficient can be integer; don't do not have to be even integer. And uh, there is uh, some kind of algebraic topology way to explain this. And uh, and uh, so, so it's really in line what uh, Ed talked about uh, uh, yesterday. So the, this, uh, this uh, transformation term is uh, not quite well defined, especially uh, when, the, when, the, uh, when the U1 bundle is, uh, is non-trivial. Okay, but uh, we can make them a little bit better defined by viewing, viewing the transformation theory as a, in terms of Weiss and Witten uh, point of view, that uh, view this uh, as an integration of a four manifold which is uh, F square, which is well-defined, but this four manifold have a boundary. So therefore, this, uh, 
we, we just define the chain summon theory on the three manifold in terms of the extension on the four manifold with the boundary. So this is a kind of standard thing to, to do this. But uh, however, in order for this uh, extension to really work, and uh, uh, so then, then this, uh, uh, we have to show that the different extension only differ by something two pi. So uh, because uh, if you define this way, uh, you, you, have, you have many extension of same 3D manifold, then you may have uh, only differ by two pi. And so, so, so therefore, uh, in order for this to work, we have to assume that, uh, uh, we have to show that uh, uh, this quantity is always a, a quantized as integer uh, uh, when m4 is closed. So have to, we have to show that this quantity, yeah, this quantity has to be integer uh, for any closed m uh, m4. And then there is some, something about the algebraic topology. And uh, uh, so, so the, it goes to falling. So that's something I learned uh, in the last a few months. And uh, there is a so-called Steenroll square, which act on this uh, 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 any two two co cycle is a simply two co cycle wedge two co cycle. Okay, but these two co cycles have a z two coefficient, so using cup rather than wedge. Okay, and also in the four dimension. This uh, zero square act on this uh, two co cycle give us so called Wu class uh, wedge this the uh, two co cycle, and this Wu class happen to be equal to the Stiefel Whitney class omega two plus omega one wedge omega one. This, uh, that's Wu class, and then with this relation uh, we can we, we can apply this uh, this two mathematical fact. We can apply this two mathematical fact on this. Uh, uh, on this, uh, uh, on this uh, 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 chain class, you know, we can pick this uh, omega two or x two to be this chain class. Also, is also two co two form. Okay, and then, then basically, this relation says that uh, uh, this uh, this f square, this basically f square, this f square is equal to this quantity mod two. There's some something like that. Then, then we, we see something kind of interesting. On the on orientable manifold, W1 equal to zero. On the manifold with spin structure, W2 equal to zero. So that means uh, this uh, F square always even. Okay, so this basically, this is the argument that led to the following conclusion that uh, on, 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 the, on any spin manifold, if M4 is a spin manifold, then this quantity is always even. This integration always even, <coughs> and the spin manifold is related to the fermion. So we, we say we have a fermion system. We must have a spin manifold. <laughs> so that means uh, in a spin manifold, we, we have a spin manifold. This quantity is always even. So that means uh, we only require uh, this quantity sigma x over two to be integer. So that's for fermion sigma x y over two. Uh, oh, oh, this is even. That means uh, sorry. This quantity is even, we only require the sigma x over two to be half integer, that means the sigma x y to be integer. So sigma x y to be integer would be fine. But however, for the, for the, uh, uh, for the bosonic case, M4 do not have to be a uh, uh, spin manifold. So therefore, this quantity can be equal to one, can be one. So therefore, that require the sigma x two over two, x y over two to be integer. So that is uh, uh, so. This is kind of algebraic topology way to see there's a difference between boson and the fermion, and uh, so therefore the, the the electromagnetic response for the boson system and the fermion system with no topological order are different. So it's a kind of, kind of interesting uh, thing. Yeah. This or oh, this wave function? Yeah. Yeah. Basically, this generalizes the mean minus W, W minus mu, W minus mu. Yeah. And that would be bosonic using sort of two-dimensional sort. And by this argument, you should make the, uh, yeah, so, or not. Uh, you, you mean you mean putting Q here? Or you add another
we had to sit down and to do the count calculation. You know, <laughs> I, or two Yeah. No, it's a, uh, yeah, I, I don't know the, uh, so, so the, you, you probably need something like absolute value of Z, I minus Z, J, to make it stable. And, uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, uh, from this point of view, whether one can consult, you know, I don't know, one, one need to do some numeric calculations. And uh, I think numeric calculation, my understanding is not conclusive at this moment. The people try it. Yeah. Okay. So, so this is a, uh, but the why I, I present this is a, it's really in the, in the following, I try to make a, a point is that uh, uh, you do not have to go from non single model. Okay. What you can do is that you just try to write down those terms. Forget non link model. I just want to directly write down those uh, gauge theory. Whatever I can write down, there may be this is a potential SPT state, and maybe they are realizable. Maybe there is a model realize those SPT ones. So if you really try to write down, then you, you try to write down something like this. And you may wonder why, what is coefficient? You know, why the coefficient has to be integer, or even integer, all the integer, you know, things like that. And this uh, algebraic topological argument is really the, is some more detailed information we need to go through, diff, diff, more detailed calculation we need to go through so that to, to really fix the coefficient. And then this kind of thinking actually works in some sense. We will try to write down those topological terms and then go through some algebraic topological constraints and uh, when you find all of them, then the, you'll find this, uh, the topology you can write down happen to come from those uh, uh, non thing models. So that's, a, that's another way uh, 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 to, to do it. So, uh, so this is probably half of what I'm prepared. And so maybe let me just uh, go through the, the last point. And uh, so, so the, so the tabular analysis model have a limitation, do not produce all the, all the uh, uh, SPD states. The reason is that this tabular analysis model uh, only produce SPD states who the boundary have a pure gauge anomaly. And the topology order we discussed in the first lecture would uh, produce edge states which have a gravitational anomaly. Uh, what is missing is a mixed gauge gravity anomaly. So there is a, some system whose boundary have a mixed gauge gravity anomaly. And those states actually is SPD states because uh, if you don't have a symmetry, you don't have gauge anomaly, then gravitational anomaly also can disappear. So the both pure gauge anomaly and mixed gauge gravity anomaly require symmetry. So, so both are SPD states. <laughs> they need a symmetry to exist. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And uh, so, so the, in terms of SPD invariance, what you need to do is that for the SPD states, for the pure SPD state from nonlinear single model, we are just using the gauge potential to write down the uh, topological term. I mean, you try to write down all the topological term using gauge connection alone. However, for the gravity part, I think from Ed's talk and uh, from some other talk. We use uh, this gravitational transform term of some stiffer within the class using this uh, uh, tangent bundle, connection with tangent bundle uh, to write down topological invariance. And then, of, of course, for the mixed one, <laughs> their topological invariance will be just a mix of a gauge potential and, uh, and some gravitational uh, topological term, just, just a mixing like, uh, like that. So therefore, one way to do that is using this algebraic topological approach you try to write down all the possible mixing things and make sure they are consistent, then that's fine. But there is another construction way to do it. The construction way to do it actually is pretty simple. 
is a uh, if you using the non-linear state model using with of uh, with target speed to be gauge group, that's what what we did before. But to couple to gravity, we need we need to gravity term to couple to gravity. So what we just add a little bit more, we choose our non-linear state model to be on the G times S O. So S O is for tiny the bundle, you know. So that's part of capital gravity. So when you, when you, when you gauge, when you, when you add in twist, we have a symmetry twist, that's gauge potential, and we have a tangent bundle, which is where curve the manifold. The tangent bundle, there's a, 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 there's a connection of the tangent bundle, we also couple to the SO part of this, uh, uh, of the target space, non thing model. So the SO is SO infinity, means uh, uh, like a stabilizing uh, thing. We, but the, for any final dimension, we can always couple to find a dimension of SON to part of a SO infinity. So this is what I mean. And uh, so, so, therefore, so that's it. So therefore, the, the two pi quantized topological term in this kind of non state model is described by this group cohomology for G cross SO with U1 coefficient. And uh, so therefore, so this, this kind of group cohomology actually describe uh, SPD states and also this a mixed uh, uh, gauge gravity anomaly uh, also include uh, here. Uh, but there's, again, there's a twist. If you really do that, uh, this, this is too much. This is too much. The reason is that uh, it's come, to, come back to our uh, problem. We will write down the topological non-linear model. How do you know it's non-trivial? So here you say, for every element of this uh, uh, group homology, we can write down topology non thing model. But how do you know this is non-trivial? They say if you can probe it by adding the symmetry twist, by adding the curved space-time, if, if, if you can probe it, then they are non-trivial. But in, if you don't have a gravity part, uh, the correspondent, because the diagraph written model and the topology non thing model both are described by same group homology that indicate that every topological non thing model can be probed by that graph written model. But this is not true when you have this SO. It's that when you have SO, you ask, can I use curved space time with a symmetry twist to probe all the elements here? The answer is no. And the reason is following. Uh, when you have a curved space time, uh, the SO part is described by tangent bundle. But the tangent bundle is pretty restricted. They are not arbitrary SO bundle over space time. They are tiny the bundle, a particular SO bundle over space time. So therefore, our ability to probe SO part is rather limited. If you can have an arbitrary SO bundle over space time to probe it, then we can probe everything. But we are limited by the tiny the bundle, only particular SO thing. So therefore, only because our probe are limited. So therefore, we can only probe certain things. So therefore, there are certain subgroup of this cannot be probed. So that should be quotient out. So therefore, one needs some kind of algebraic topology consideration to see which can be probed, which cannot be probed. This algebraic topological consideration is uh, something like uh, what I just uh, discussed. Oh, this, uh, yeah, this, uh, this uh, this uh, stereo square, this uh, wool class, and uh, you know this is a uh, uh, this is a part of a, a top algebraic topology, which involved try to determine which can be probed, which cannot be probed, and uh, so by doing this, uh, and then we can we can obtain uh, the the table. Yeah, this is, so this is, if you if you if you do this, you can get the table, and uh, just after the quotient. And just, uh, in the, just uh, like Ed said, this uh, black one, uh, group cohomology, is a pure gauge anomaly. The black one, all pure gauge anomaly. The blue one is a mixed gauge gravity anomaly. Yeah, so, and the red one. So, so you can see that uh, for, 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 for unitary group, the first example appears in four plus one dimension. <laughs> That's pretty high dimension. And uh, only for non-unity group, like a uh, time-reversal symmetry, we have a three plus one dimensional example. 
Z2T is time reversal? Time reversal. Z2T is time reversal. And what's the difference between red and blue? Did you tell us? Okay. And, uh, uh, red is very high up, I see. Okay. The difference between red and blue is that uh, to compute the blue, uh, okay, um, okay, yeah. This, uh, so this expression is a mixed gauge gravity anomaly. So the coefficient will be in this uh, HSO. And uh, there is a way to, to do this uh, calculation, quotient calculation in the trivial, in an easy way. You replace this uh, HSO by invertible bosonic topology order. This, this actually describes invertible bosonic topology order. If you do that, you get all the blue entries. But there's a little bit of mistake. I, I don't know. Uh, so there's a, this trick don't always work. So at this six plus dimension, it seems missing something. Uh, but I'm not totally comfortable, confident about this. And uh, I need to, because I'm, I'm learning this doing calculations. So, uh, so uh, I hope after I understand better, we'll come back to this, whether it is too right or really there or things like that. Uh, but the idea is that uh, it's a group cohomology with a coefficient in invertible bosonic topology order. And this is, this is like a more general structure. Then the U1, almost like a bosonic, invertible bosonic topological order of a zero dimensional space time. <laughs> the U1 can be viewed that way. In any other dimension, uh, you can put an invertible bosonic topological order, which is abelian group here, then compute the group cohomology in the value of a bosonic topology insulator, then you can produce those uh, mixed gauge gravity anomaly. Yeah, so that's uh, basically this. Okay. And uh, maybe just a uh, last thing is that uh, to connect what I talk about, I think this was uh, <laughs> what he talked about. Is that uh, for the for the SPD runs of a bosonic topology insulator, so there's a term like uh, basically it's a pi times, uh, I think this is two pi times F square. That's what the euro, that's in the euro normally, so it's two pi times square. So this is a wonderful topology invariance. I think what I talked about yesterday is that for Fermion case, this coefficient can be halved. So this became pi f square. This is like a pi f square. This is a two pi f square. So the two pi f square appear as a wonderful topology invariance for bosonic topology insulator. But for Fermion topology insulator, this coefficient is further halved. I think, and uh, yes. But then there's a then this very funny thing. There's additional gravitational term. You can see here. I don't know whether do I need that or not. I'm not totally sure. But uh, uh, but uh, in looks like I don't need this. And uh, so uh, so this is a uh, so this uh, so 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 for Bernoulli topology, we have a we have a three Z2 class described by this three kind of topology environments. But from any case, this I think is one of them. Uh, I don't know whether there's other, you know. So that's a kind of connection with uh, some talk here. Yeah, I should stop here. It's pretty late. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.